Texas to the Lackland Air Force, what was Duncan Field at the time? Mm -hmm. And I remember that the commanding officer came out and he said, Well, welcome. He said, You're, uh, Where did you come from? And we said, JB. And he says, Well, I think you're going to like it here. <laughs> <laughs> and we did. They, we had three kinds of meat that first night. I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> And they treated. Then we were in our outfit. Then we were, then we were somebody, mm -hmm. instead of being down here in mm -hmm. basic training, you know. And uh, I was in a good outfit. I, I went to three different schools. I went to Robertson Aviation and in, uh, in St. Louis at the airport. And, uh, Robertson, Colonel Robertson, was a good friend of of Lindbergh's, mm -hmm. and this is Lindbergh, he was mm -hmm. in the shop previously, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got back and, and they sent me to Braniff Airlines in Dallas, Texas to work with the mechanics there. Mm -hmm. And then the third school was at the San Antonio Air Depot, which is a huge civilian operated mm -hmm. major overall stuff. So where did you end up going? 
You were in infantry, you said? No. What were you, what was your task? Airplane mechanic. Airplane mechanic as well, okay. So the, these were important bases in, in Australia to get the island hopping and taking back of islands and so forth. It was entirely ne very necessary. Well, it started uh, in Australia. Mm -hmm. We'd send, New Guinea didn't have enough bases, so we'd send up half a dozen airplanes mm -hmm. and they'd, they'd pull a mission out of New Guinea going over the old Owen own Stanley range and fly back to Port Moresby and then back to Australia. Okay. But when things got more organized, we moved up to New Guinea. Oh. Do you remember the name of the base there? We were at uh, 14 Mile Field, that's what they called that's what it. They call it. Okay. There was a bunch of fields around New Guinea. Gave a little more flexibility to the... Yeah. So where would they fly from New Guinea then, on um, missions? Well, they were trying to move over the Owen Stanleys and get foothold in, on the other side, you know, so yeah. we were bombing them over there. Okay. And it was Ley and Salamoa and some of those places that we had tried to get into which we finally managed to do. It took a while though, I mean. Took a while. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of planes were you At that time it was on the B-25. Okay. Was this the same sort of, of plane that you were working with? Well, we had, we were in two different kinds of outfits. Okay. Norman was in the outfit that moved from island to island, mm -hmm. taking care of, you had one plane or two planes to take care of? Well, I was assigned to one plane. Yeah. Our outfit was major overhaul. We had one branch wheel and brakes, one instruments, one cheap metal which I was in, and uh, one engine overhaul. We were a, a big outfit. We should have never have been in on the invasion at all. We were part of the invasion force of the, Phil, of the first island in the Philippines uh -huh. that they took back. And we had no business in there. There wasn't even a decent strip there yet. Mm -hmm. so. Do you remember the name, Norman, of, of the plane that, that was yours to keep track of? Well, Baby Blitz was uh, Baby Blitz. <laughs> painted on the side of it. So were you responsible for any of the painting and naming of things, or did that happen before you? Well, I wasn't high enough on the ladder to <laughs> have anything to say, say, so, say so in that. <laughs> but your plane made it made it through the whole whole experience, or not? No, I didn't. Oh. I got to be on several different planes before. Okay. They'd go out and never return, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's a lot of bodies lying at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of airplanes laying on the other side of the old oh, Stanley oh. Range <coughs> in the jungle. Yeah. You, even to this day, I think. Yeah. Well, I know of one B-24 that just came over from the States. They're trying to get a get a strip decent third and a working on it and it came in because it had some engine trouble or something. And the guy started to fix it and, and the colonel came and said, we got to have the strip open, the bombers or the fighters are coming in. And we don't have any revetments to put it in. Well, what do we do with it? Show her in the bay, he said. That's where it went. And then a, a short time later, a silver, oh, one of these 
nice ship, huh? Civilian ship. Beechcraft? Huh? Oh? A Beechcraft? Yeah, some one of them just came in there it was, and uh, that had something wrong with it and he came back and he said, that's not a fighting airplane. He said, all that is is to send it for boost for the officers. He said, shove her to bay. <laughs> so you did. Yeah. <laughs> I crawled out there at low tide and cut a piece of that beautiful upholstery out to wrap my camera in. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about waste. You <laughs> can't imagine all the waste. Oh. But that was the only thing they could do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh. You can't land a plane on top of another one. So how long were the landing strips generally? Did they just keep expanding and expanding as the war went on? Or? Yeah. 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 Improving. Yeah. Because some of the early ones were kind of short hop. Yeah. Um, planes. We had major, you were here Major Bong and Captain, or Major McGuire and Captain Johnson, there were three aces. Okay. They flew off for a strip there for a while. Oh. Major Bowman died in a plane crash after the war. He was, I think he was the number one pilot for he was kills. Ace. Uh -huh. And he crashed someplace up in Wisconsin, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Wasn't it? I think he was. Hmm. But this was years after you said that. Years after the war? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was mad at the Japs because he lost his wife in the Philippines when they evacu when they had to evacuate the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody is mad at the Japs, but <laughs> he had extra reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so you ended up you said in Okinawa after the war. Showing. 
than the Justin Sherwood. <laughs> that was a better goal. <laughs> <laughs> so how long after the end of the official complex did it take you get to get back to San Francisco and where did you end up coming back to? Well, I was a draftee, so they must have realized that. And I, I was like, thinking I was the first bunch to get back on the boat, uh -huh. go did, home. It, it, did it turn out that way? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you should have been too, for heaven's sake. You had four years overseas, didn't you? Three years and eight months. Yeah. yeah. So what did you? What was your first sight of, a, of America, mainland? For you? Oh, I don't know what, what day that was. Uh -huh. We uh, came back into uh, yeah, Seattle oh. and we came up through Puget Sound. Uh -huh. And you had never been to Washington State before? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that Army deal had. The first for almost anything. First, first bus ride and first train ride and first boat ride and all that stuff. So were you, uh, did you have sea legs when you got on that first boat or did it take a while to get used to all the fishing? It was real good sized boat so they didn't didn't bother your legs any. Okay. So how long of a did it take to get from the stateside on a boat to Australia? I think it was twenty one or two days. Yeah. Did you say thirty one? Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah. Took us thirty one. Thirty one. We but we left from New York. Oh okay. yeah. So you did the Panama Canal? I went through now. the Panama. Uh -huh. Okay. Panama was a da dangerous place. You know, with Japs, her German subs here, hanging around there. Mm -hmm. I remember one night everything shut off. <laughs> you could also hear the thump, thump, thump of the engine, you know. But they dead in the water for quite a while. I was expecting to be hit in the side any time. Sure, sure. When you shipped out, did you ship out from the West Coast? San Francisco. From San Francisco. Okay. Twenty some days on a boat was a long time to wonder if you were going to get there. Yeah. You saw a lot of water. <laughs> How many men do you think were, uh, were on the ship? Thousands, maybe? One, five thousand on your ship. Five thousand on yours. There's that, about that many on the one I was on, too. Yeah. SS Uruguay was on. I was on. I was on the Mariposa. That was a converted luxury liner. Yeah. Oh. This was this was luxury, too. Yeah. So did it feel like luxury? <laughs> well, yeah, most of the luxury was gone. <laughs> we had state rooms, but it was six to a six to a room. Six to a room. <laughs> well, you got to be friendly with a lot of people in Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was it like going from civilian life? What was the most difficult adjustment? You said you had three three meets, but that wasn't always the case. What? But yeah, when you were at different places, you had better food at sometimes, oh, and yeah. not so much at the other. When we got in a, in a regular outfit, they treated you like, almost like an equal, you know, okay. compared to the dirt under their feet. Yeah. So Norman, how many people were in your division, if you will? Well, it goes by squadrons, you know, in the Air Force. And I think we had around 200 men. Okay. And you pretty much stayed together yeah. as a unit through the whole time.
Did you have buddies and such that were in the service, different places that you compared after the fact? I had a few of you know. I had a friend that was down, right down Humboldt, Iowa, that I was friends with for quite a while. But you didn't make too many friends because they didn't come and they go. And yeah. Our outfits stayed together. Huh? Those are different, different breed of stuff than yours, I guess. All together with the same bunch about three years. You get to know each other pretty well. Yeah. So were you ever worried about raids on your air bases and so forth? Or did you think you, you guys were kind of behind? We got really clobbered on the 12th of April in 1943. Where, where were you about? We were on the 14-mile field on, Oak, uh, on Port Moresby. Uh -huh. And they cleaned us out of airplanes entirely. Really? Did you have anybody out on mission at the time, or were you all on base? We were on base. Uh -huh. So where were you at the time during all this? Barracks off to the side? Well, it was in the gym. The Australians had dug a trench, drainage trench, right across behind our airplane. And when we got word that the air raid was coming, why we jumped in there. Okay. And I was in the water up to my waist. Huh? <laughs> and you just t ducked your head and hoped for the best? Well, there was dirt piled up on one side and sure. bare on the other, and the, the pile of dirt was on the right side. So okay. Cut off some of the shrapnel and mm -hmm. stuff. But you said you lost ba basically all the planes at yeah. that time. They burned three of them. They dropped incendiary bombs. And mm -hmm. Mine didn't get burned, but uh, it had so many holes in it that There wasn't much saving out of it. Well, I don't know if it ever flew anymore, but it did. Mm -hmm. So what did they do with you then when you, when all of your equipment basically is gone in a raid, they move you out or do they bring in new equipment or what? Well, they switched us over to A-20s and about the same time. Okay. So was that a, a bit of a change trying to figure out a new plane or were they all pretty much well, they had the same engines and the yeah. same basic principle. So did you lose many men well, in that raid? That was a, well, we had warning that that late raid was coming. Okay. <clears throat> and everybody had gotten orders to dig foxholes. About how much time did you have before they actually showed up? Was it hours or? Well, I suppose maybe it was half a day or so. Half a day, okay. Hmm. But we only had one man that was hurt. And he was an Italian with beautiful wavy black hair and then the shrapnel creased him right over his. Huh? <laughs> he was the old casualty. Hard at his hair farm. Yeah. <laughs> he must not have ducked deep enough in the voxel or something. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Did they ever raid where you were, Marty? Raid? Uh, the the air, air raids yeah. on your space? When we landed, oh, there was an air raid going on there. Oh. They had the 90 millimeter ACAC -ac going up. I don't know. <laughs> I died. I, a, I found a little hole. I was going to crawl in and it was full of water. So, so uh, a bunch of wooden boxes of 
of food or something while I was standing there, so I went down the long side of that to try and have some cover. And of course, if a bomb had gone on anywhere near that, it was a bomb of boxes on top of me. I've been yeah. Dead. Yeah. I've thought of that many times, how dumb that was. But uh, oh, it was terrible. Yeah. The only place they could put us was a place where there was a big bomb, bomb hole with a bunch of dead Japs laying all around. Yeah. Quite an experience to go through, but one is enough. So is it easy to talk about, or is it the sort of thing that you, you kind of block out experiences, maybe? Well, for, for me, it isn't too bad, because I never got into the rough and tumble stuff, but mm -hmm. if you were in the infantry, infantry that would be a different story. The ship that we came in on got sunk before we got our our water tank off there, so we didn't have any water. Oh. SS, SS Hobart Baker, Liberty ship. When you Worst went into the travel there is. <laughs> when you went into the Philippines. It, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> there was no uh, bathroom facilities there, so they welded up. Of trough at an angle mm -hmm. on the on the railing of it. <laughs> they had water running in one arm oh. out the other. It was self flushing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they had to jerry rig a few things during the war. <laughs> So you were at you were on the Philippines Merv after MacArthur left it and then came back. Yeah. Yeah. No, he hadn't come back. He hadn't come back yet. No. Okay. Yeah, he, that's right. He he did come. I saw him waiting ashore on a, with a dress up, mm -hmm. coat on, and mm -hmm. oh, post picture, I suppose. <laughs> that was. That was a long time after the invasion. On sure, it made it imply that he was right there. Well, oh, yeah. he had a, this gold cap on and everything, no helmet, no nothing. It wasn't action. <laughs> they called him. Some people called him Duck Out Doug, not Doug Out. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> um. Like we had a major that made a blunder one night. He said, somebody called him Major and he said, don't call me Major, call me Ray. Ray was his first name. And he never lived that long. <laughs> he said, well, I mean, any enemy to know he was an officer. <laughs> well, you're talking about how did I meet? Yeah. Jewel. Yeah. Jewel and the teachers were eating at the restaurant when I came home. And so I threw Anita Sunby and she arranged for me to have a date with her. So we dated. And she loved to sing and I loved to sing. And we do a lot of driving and, and sing. She could harmonized to anything I could sing. So she wrote to me every week for all the time I was in service. We came home when I came home on the on the New Year's Eve. We were supposed to try and get us home but for Christmas. You know? uh -huh. And that didn't ever happen. But, and uh, she had a date with, with somebody else. And he called her and told her that I was home, so he 
Trooper. He backed out. <laughs> and she told me later, she was scared I wouldn't call and she'd be sitting <laughs> home alone. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got married six months later. Oh, yeah. well, nor were you married before the war or after? No. Were you married before the war or after? After. After. So did you write to anybody when you were abroad? Or is that too personal? Just, question? just to my family. Okay. It was hard to get mail, wasn't it though? Okay. During the times and mail got pretty old by the time you got it yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't send any fresh baloney. <laughs> It's all green when you get it. <laughs> Do you remember getting anything other than food in a package from home? Yeah, well, it was goodies, you know, but yeah. the package looked like it had been used for a football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were there crumbs inside instead of uh, whole things? <laughs> yeah. I remember getting some sausage that was, was green. <laughs> Did you, were you able to send anything home? Other than, you know, words on a paper or? No. Well, I did send, uh, there was a Jap fighter plane laying there with a, with that Jap in it. It's been laying there for a long time. It didn't even smell anymore. Um, I took my, Plier, or my cutters and I cut off the, the red circle, you know, uh -huh. I cut part of that and, and part of the green and uh, a little piece about like that, representing each color of the plane mm -hmm. and sent it to my niece. And she was just overjoyed. She took it to school and everything. <laughs> What do you have here? It's part of the ammunition can out of the B-25. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Norman Storley. Is this your uh, number? That's my number. Your number. It's the same as the dog tag on it. Yeah. From 42 to 44 New Guinea. 13th Bomb Squadron. the mind made it. Thank you.